Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, appreciate the time you give me to uh, share our story with you, and uh, I'll, I'll work, through our, uh, work through our presentation here quickly as we can within the allocated time, but I think you'll find our story uh, certainly pretty exciting. And, and I, I guess I can start off to say I didn't realize that when we signed up here, but we're actually the only European play, pure European play, uh, at, at the uh, conference here. So I guess you can keep that in mind that we really we really do have a European centricity to our story because all our properties and projects are in uh, Scandinavia. And certainly we're about the uh, leading edge materials is about the emerging, the emerging market and materials for the energy storage sector. So electrification of vehicles, stationary storage, lithium ion batteries, and we believe there's some exceptional opportunities in this regard. We have our normal disclaimer that everyone's seen many, many times about forward-looking statements, and uh, obviously we still fall under the same, the same rules uh, uh, under the TSXV. So a little bit about Leading Edge Materials. We're a Canadian public company, TSXV listed, but as I mentioned earlier, we're a, a Scandinavian assets. That's, uh, that's our region that we work in, and we've spent uh, a number of decades, uh, the group within, with our, within our company has spent a number of decades working in that region. So we know it well, and we know, we know how to get things done there. Our flagship is the Waxner Graphite Mine and Production Facility, which people may have been familiar with under the former name of the company, which was Flinders Resources, and as mentioned before, leading, leading edge materials as a result of the combination or merger of, leading, of uh, Flinders Resources and Tasman Metals. And this facility, the Waxner Graphite facility, we brought into production a number of years ago, and it is, it is basically poised to produce uh, specialty materials for the lithium ion battery market. Our core investments are matched to this, this high growth market that I mentioned, which is the shift that we're seeing for, uh, to, uh, to, to the low carbon energy generation and energy storage. And it's not just about electric vehicles, it gets a lot of, it gets a lot of mention, but it, it's more than just electrification of vehicles, it's trucks and buses and other transportation to reduce the carbon footprints uh, throughout the world. And we're seeing it all, you know, whether it's in China or North America or, or Europe, we're seeing a huge shift. Our assets and our research are focused on these raw materials. So primarily, as I mentioned, with our flagship, it's graphite, but we also have some lithium and cobalt properties that we brought into our suite of assets because we found our customers that we speak to for graphite are also interested in these other commodities. Um, we're also, some of the materials are also important for high thermal efficiency products, such as insulation. And, and again, this is all part of that green energy, preserving the energy that we have in utilization. Um, we believe uh, leading edge materials is I ideally placed to play a role in the, sustain in the supply of the sust sustainable technology and energy critical materials. A little bit about the company. Again, as, a, as mentioned before, we're, we're on the TSXV under LEM. Um, we have 80, eight, just uh, under 84 million shares, uh, fully diluted 96. We've had uh, a you know, market cap in the order of 60 to 70 million dollars and we have uh, approximately three and a half million dollars in cash. So we're, we're in a good position to advance, advance our story in regards to the flagship property and also do some, do some work on our uh, exploration assets. Bit of a background on the board and management. Uh, my background is, is project development. I, I'm the guy that comes in after the discovery and gets these things into operation. And that's, that's why I was brought in to Flinders Resources to get the uh, walks and graphite running. And also part of that is also get rocks and graphite so it's profitable. And when we started walks and graphite back in 2014 and 15, it was for a different market in a different space. The traditional market for refractory materials is really not a market for, for a Western graphite producer because it's such a strong um, input from the Chinese sources of, uh, of refractory grade material. So we've changed the focus of the company with, with the graphite towards the specialty materials for uh, lithium ion batteries. The remainder of the team has a broad skill set in exploration as well as strong corporate finance and regulatory back in our back office in, uh, in Vancouver and then our local in-country and uh, European uh, background as well, legal, legal and regulatory, which is, which is critical for all the activities that we're undertaking, whether it's exploration or working through the various uh, development work that we have to, in, in our graphite facility, to have that expertise. So we have, as I mentioned before, we have a team with a long history of operating in the Nordic countries, and, and basically that's the team in front of you here. 
So the investment case, people go, well, what, what's the story with leading edge? Why should we be interested? You're sort of a production story with exploration assets and typically in the TSXV, it's, it's more about exploration and, and people are, are looking for a discovery. It really is, for us, it's about our production ready graphite facility. We are really the only, only organization outside of, of China right now that can, can claim to have a production facility that's fully operational. And it's a Western production facility that operates under European EU regula uh, environmental regulations. Low capital cost to upgrade that facility to produce our, uh, the high purity battery grade material, which is for, and it's not just lithium ion batteries, but it's automotive grade lithium ion batteries. And, and I'll, I'll get into that distinction a little further in my, in my, dis my talk here. Strategic mining friendly asset located in Sweden is close to the demand. I mean, we're targeting the lithium ion cell manufacturing in Europe and we are literally right next door. The exploration upside, as I've mentioned before, we've got some lithium, cobalt, and the well-known Noah Shah rare earth uh, deposit, which um, is probably a, certainly a world-class top tier asset, and we've brought that under the fold of leading edge materials, and that too is available at the uh, PFS level that we will, when the time is right, we'll advance that into, into feasibility study. Um, the other thing, we can grow our production facility so the the graphite that we've identified as a resource, which I'll touch on later in my presentation at Waxna, is, is really not the issue. With graphite, it's about having the production facilities, about having the capability to produce the raw materials for the customers and meeting their specification. We have the production facility. We have a graphite deposit proven out to 7.7 .7 million tons at 9.3%, but there's significantly more graphite there that when the time is right, we'll drill it out. But it's an important thing to keep in mind for graphite. It's it's not exactly rare. What is rare is to find a graphite deposit with a power line and, and a production facility, but even a graphite deposit with a road and a power line running through it and over it is what you're looking for. And as I've mentioned before, a highly experienced management team with specific experience in the region. A bit about the markets. So I've talked about lithium ion batteries and that really is a broad brush describer, but it's about energy production and storage. So we're all familiar with solar panels and how you can push it into the grid, but ultimately the grid is the weak link and these stationary storage of lithium ion, lithium ion batteries will, will be and, and are quickly becoming the future of, of managing energy production and storage. So if you produce green energy, if you have a windmill and you've got nowhere to store it, as soon as the wind stops, then you're back on the grid again. So having batteries that can capture that energy and use it when you need it rather than when it's actually being produced. Solar is the same. We don't really turn many lights on in the daytime, but at night we obviously want to turn the lights on and, and the sun's not helping us with that. Um, energy efficient building materials. Again, that's about utilization of special materials, whether it's for insulation or using graphite or even graphene for films on windows to keep the heat in or keep the heat out or even possibly in the future generate some solar power. You have all these big panels that now are installed on buildings, but we're seeing a trend towards new materials that can gather the uh, solar energy and you'll need both the materials to gather the solar energy which are these special materials as well as the storage and then powertrain efficiency with the various rare earths that are required for the electrification of, of transportation. So a little bit about our portfolio and I won't spend a great deal of time on this if people have any questions I'm happy to uh, to have a chat about that at our at our booth in the next room there because it uh, you know there's a lot more detail here than I can go into. Certainly this is just the overview. So we have the Waxna graphite mine in central Sweden, it's about a three hour drive north of uh, Stockholm. We have our Burgaby lithium project, Contio cobalt project in Finland, and a Vena cobalt project in, in uh, Sweden as well. And then of course the Noah Shar project in uh, so, so central Sweden. Again, very close uh, proximity infrastructure. It's a, it's a very easy region to work in. And we've found for all the projects that we're working on, um, it's, an, it's an excellent region to be in. A little, uh, a little bit about what we're doing and preparing for the future. So we're with, uh, with our uh, Waxna processing plant, we're, we're optimizing the flow sheet because the specification for a refractory grade material is significantly uh, less superior to what uh, we require for our lithium ion battery customers. So we're working through um, advancing that flow sheet and, and approving the processing of our graphite to meet those specifications. And, and we have to work in conjunction with each of these battery cell manufacturers because they all have different specifications. We're working with special specialist labs, battery labs, and producing battery cells. We actually have to, 
in order to satisfy the requirements of a battery cell manufacturer, it's not about saying, here's some material and go off and test it. We actually have to work through quite an aggressive test regime that can take up to a year to actually produce a number of battery cells, initially a couple, then a dozen, and then a hundred, and put them through various cycling tests and destructive tests to demonstrate that our graphite is indeed suitably uh, produced to, to meet and exceed their requirements. Um, we've been busy developing relationships with battery customers. It's, it's great to talk about this emerging market and how special it is, but the reality is right now there are no battery cells manufactured in any degree in Europe. There is a great deal, and I'll, I'll touch on this in a few slides, see how my time's going here in a few minutes, um, which will show why we see this as being important. We've got to build these relationships with these future customers because that's, that's the future market, and that's, that's that demand curve that we, we are targeting. Um, we are drilling out the Burgaby Lithium project, and we, hope, uh, we expect to have some results for that in the, in the coming, coming weeks, probably uh, uh, two to four weeks from now, and that'll be the first, the first actual drilling. We've had good results with some surface sampling, boulders, and uh, some outcrops. We're doing some groundwork on the Cobalt projects, and we'll advance them in the most cost-effective cost manner. And Nora Shar, as I mentioned, we have a PFS as a starting point for the next round of work on the project. But again, it's a rare earth project, and our expectation is that we'll see some more interesting movement in the rare earth sector, but certainly it's been a bit quiet for a few years. But our, our mandate with that particular project is we secure the asset, maintain it at low cost, and when the time is right, we can bring it back into the fold and, and ideally targeting to get it into production as well. I won't go through these slides, it's just a picture of, of our processing facility, so you can see we've, we've got all the nuts and bolts that we need to, to, to produce the graphite, and it's a, it's a great plant, it's a fantastic location, lots of uh, uh, people, you know, human resources nearby to be able to man up our, our people requirements as required, but it's, uh, it's a very easy region to work in, and when, I, when we went through the refurbishment, the capabilities within literally 20 to 50 miles was everything we needed. We didn't bring it, I wasn't bringing people in from other countries or anything like that to, to get the work done that we needed to do. So it was, a, it was really refreshing after the last few projects of working in the likes of Colombia and the Philippines where there was a, a great need to bring in fairly high cost uh, expat support. So it's a great region to work in. This again is a resource, everyone can read the numbers there, Big, the main number 7.7 .7 million, 9.3%. That's it's just a sort of scratch on the surface and. You know, as a gold person as well, if I say it's a scratch on a surface, that comes across a bit sort of flighty. But gold is hard to find, graphite's not. I mean, that really is the sum of the point. Graphite, we have a bunch of graphite around. We haven't drilled a great deal out. The NI4310 rules are kind of a bit odd. They treat us like a, like a base metal, and the drilling spacing that we're requiring to drill out what is effectively a bulk commodity is absurd. So if I wanted to turn this into a reserve, I'd have to probably spend millions of dollars to no real benefit to prove up that my graphite is there where we, we've already been mining it so we, we're, we're comfortable with, with this level of, of uh, detail. Um, this is a high purity project, again, just the work that we've been working through, taking our refractory grade material, spherinizing it, and that's shaping it, turning it into basically little spheres, and then purifying it to meet the 99.99 requirements of, uh, of the automotive grade batteries. Burgaby Lithium Project, again, these are just some of the results. So we, we've seen some great results from the surface, but the, the drilling will actually tell us whether we've actually got something of substance underneath. But certainly the geologists are, are excited, and that's always a good sign. Noah Shar, again, won't spend a great deal of time on that. It's a, it's a, it's a, good, it's, it's a great location in proximity to, uh, to the resources and people that we require, and easy access. There's literally a road running right beside it, and. Uh, and power line. So when the time is right for rare earths, we're well positioned to advance this, this world-class asset. Cobalt, we've got the Vena Cobalt in, in uh, Sweden and the Contio uh, Pro Cobalt project in, uh, in Finland. These are very much early stage projects and we're literally scratching the surface right now, but we're, we're optimistic that we'll be able to prove these up over time. And that timing is less critical for the work we're doing with cobalt, or sorry, with graphite in that the customers are interested in our graphite because we're production, but they ultimately will have an interest in, in cobalt as an example because it's becoming more and more critical to their manufacturing requirements. So this is my favorite part of the presentation because it's about the markets and we talk about what's the big deal. Well, this I think is a picture that just shows what we've gone from very early state, you know, much light left in this thing. 
Um, you know, we've gone from very simplistic materials to exceptionally complicated materials, and that's why we see our creative materials being a, an important part of this. And, and, and we capture a number of these in there. But it, it, it tells the story of the world that we live in now. It's a lot more complicated. We're all carrying around probably at least a couple, if not in some cases, I'd probably carry half a dozen batteries with me at some level or another between phones and iPads and computers and all the other gadgets we need in our lives. So we really do have a much more complicated life. And as a result, much more complicated materials going along with it. This is just a snapshot of the market as far as I apologize, it's a little bit blurry sometimes when it comes up on certain screens, but basically it's, it's highlighting the uptake of the likes of BMW, Daimler, Volkswagen Group, Tesla, and Tesla is obviously a well-known image for electrification and electric vehicles only, and, and the big auto manufacturers in Europe here are aware of the fact that Tesla's you know, put a bit of a flame under them to get moving, and they took a punt probably back in the early thousands and said it's going to be diesel, not electrification. Well. That may not have been the right decision based on what we're seeing now, and certainly they've changed their tune. And the, this curve here is a pretty incredible curve for the uptake of lithium ion. And you, you, that's the early thousands, and this is 2015, and the curve is predicted to go as steep simply because of the, the change that we're seeing in the uptake of lithium. The, 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 the actual cost of lithium ion batteries has come down, and that's, that is what has driven it. It's the it's demand. and. You know, smartphones showed up somewhere around here, so everyone's walking around with at least one or two batteries, lithium ion. But when we start looking at the electrification of automobiles, buses and trucks, and stationary storage, this curve will continue to grow. This table here just talks about the value adding process from refractory grade all the way up to a synthetic grade graphite, which is what our natural flake is a, is a suitable substitute for. People are, are you know, uh, Cell manufacturers are paying up to twenty-five to thirty-five thousand dollars a ton for this material. So we we have an opportunity to bring it in at around you know eight eight to twelve thousand dollars a ton, and that's good for the battery market, but it's also good for us because we've done a huge value adding from six hundred dollars a ton or seven hundred dollars a ton to to uh, ten. This is my favorite slide. This is why we believe the market, and that's why we believe we're well positioned. This is, there's, there are this many gigafactories planned here just in Europe. This is not talking about China. It's not talking about North America. This is just our market here in Europe. Even if half of these take off, we don't have a hope of supplying that, that, the materials to them. There's a recently new upstart that people may be aware of, a Swedish gigaplant called Northvolt, and they just announced two weeks ago. We've been in discussion with them and a number of the other plants that are planned here in order to line up our, to meet our production to meet their demand. Right now, their, their demand is zero because they're not in production, but some of them are as close as two years away. We need to parallel our activities to ensure that our specification, or sorry, our products meet the specific specification of the individual cell manufacturers. So this is, a, this is a simplistic picture, but it really tells a story, and this is the market. This is a question that comes up, why high, bay, why, uh, high, high purity battery grade material? Well. The big blue block that's sitting on top here, that's a margin. So there'll always be downward pressure on the value of this material, so the, the, the lithium-ion cell manufacturers are going to be pushing us to reduce our selling cost, and we have opportunity in here. These are our input costs. This is our margin, and this is a, based on a 5,000 ton per annum production, which is a result of producing 10,000 ton. You have about a 50 percent loss, which is a byproduct, and then the battery-grade material. Then you spherinize, spherinizing and purify it. At 5,000 5, tons per annum, that's about a $50 million a year cash flow at our base rate, and we're looking at well over 25%. I know that will change over time. There'll always be downward pressure, but we have opportunity here also to improve, improve our input costs. These little graphs here just, again, are representing this huge uptake of lithium-ion batteries and the various inputs of amorphous graph, sorry, uh, artificial graphite, so synthetic graphite and natural flake. And, Again, it's just setting the stage. There's a, there's a lot happening here, and, and we believe we're well positioned. Little summary here, Nordic Advantage, it really is a, is a great district to be in. It. It's one of the original countries of mining. I mean, we are all familiar with Canada and Australia, but Sweden was one of the you know, mainstays of the mining sector. And many of these names people recognize and don't realize that they're from the Nordic region. So it's a great region to be in there. We have a lot of technical capability and, and expertise to be working with. So in summary, right place, right time. That's really what we think. We, 
We're a high growth sector, as, as the market indicates. We're in the right location. We're in Europe. A unique mix of assets with production and graphite to start selling right away, get cash flow, but also meet some of our customers' requirements for these other commodities as that becomes necessary, uh, lithium or cobalt or, or what have you. There's a, a you know, it's a, a value add opportunities. We can value add our various commodities to meet these specialty requirements for the lithium ion battery cell manufacturers. Opportunity for new investments, we can bring on other commodities online that meet within these specialty materials and focusing in Europe. We, we really have maintained a European focus because we see that being almost a, a market that no one else is looking at and it's better to be unique in a, in a new market or, or a different market than trying to, trying to battle with a bunch of other people in, in one market. And then skilled and experienced management team. And that really is a summary of our story, Leading Edge Materials. Happy to talk further, questions, what have you, but uh, appreciate your time and thanks very much.